Okay, uh, this video is about one of the key applications of ordinary differential equations to electrical flow, flow of occurrence in a, in a network. And so I drew a network, a very simple network. It's just called an RLC loop. It's only got one loop, so it's a really simple network. It's, the R stands for a resistance to the flow. The L stands for an inductance. And the C is the capacitance. Those are the three elements of a simple, linear, constant coefficient uh, uh, problem associated with one loop. And then there's a switch, which I'll close, and the flow will begin. And there's a voltage source, so like a battery, that, uh, or maybe, a, it, let's, make it an, let's make this alternating current. So the voltage source will be uh, some voltage times an e to the i omega t. So we're, go we're going to have alternating current. And the question is, what is the current? The current will, we have to find the current i. So the current is i of t is the current going around the loop. And we saw our differential equation will have that unknown i of t rather than my usual y. I'm going to use i for current. OK, again, this is an RLC loop that everybody has to understand as in, in, uh, in electrical uh, uh, engineering. OK, so I'm going to have a second order differential equation. Well, you'll see what that equation is. So the you remember Ohm's law, that the voltage is the current times the resistance. So this, is, this gives me a, a, a voltage across the resistor. If the, if the current is I and the resistance is R, then the voltage drop from here to here is I times R. So that's that term. But now I, I have uh, also my current is changing it with time. It's all, this is alternating current. It's going up and down. So there's a, the current through is, is also going through the inductance. And there, the voltage drop across the inductance has this form. The derivative of, of the current comes into it. And in the capacitance, which is building up charge, the integral of the current comes in. So that's, that's the physical equation that expresses this voltage law, which says that if I, that the, around a closed loop, this is a closed, loops are closed, add to zero. So I have four terms and they combine to give zero. OK, so there's an equation I'd like to solve. And how am I going to solve that equation? By the standard idea, which applies when I have constant coefficients and I have a pure exponential uh, forcing term, I look for a solution that is a multiple of that exponential, right? The solution to differential equations with constant coefficients, if they have an exponential forcing, then the solution is some uh, i equals some, uh, shall I say, w e to the i omega t. Some multiple of the, of the source gives me the solution to that differential equation. Well, it's actually a differential integral equation. I can make it a more familiar looking differential equation by taking the derivative of every term. Suppose I do that. Suppose I take the derivative of every term just to make it look really familiar. That would be L times I double prime, right? Taking the derivative of the derivative. 
this would be r i prime. The derivative of the integral would be just i itself. So I'd have 1 over c i. And I would have the derivative here i omega v e to the i omega t. So it's just a standard second order constant coefficient linear differential equation. And in fact, you're, if you were a mechanical engineer, you would look at that and say, well, I don't know what L, R, and 1 over C stand for, but I know that I should see the mass, the damping, and the stiffness there. So we have a complete parallel between two important fields of engineering, the electrical engineering with L, R, and 1 over C, mechanical engineering with M, B for damping, and K for stiffness. And actually, that parallel allows, uh, allowed analog computers, which, were, which came before uh, digital computers and lost out in that uh, competition. An analog computer was just solving this linear equation by actually imposing the voltage and measuring the current. So that an analog computer actually solved the equation by creating the model and measuring the answer. OK, but we're not creating an analog computer here. We're just doing just, doing differential equations. So why don't I figure out what that w is? So, so what am I going to do, as always, as always? I have this equation. I have a pure exponential. I look for a solution of that same form. I plug it in, and I get an equation for w. That's exactly what I'll do on the next board. I'll plug, I'll put w e to the i omega t into this equation and uh, find w. OK, let's do it. OK. Maybe I bring that down just a hair and you can, uh, I'll do it here where you can watch me do it. So I, I have L times the derivative, so I have L. The derivative will bring down an I omega L. Everything is going to multiply W and match V. That's, that's when I put this into the equation. The derivative is an i omega l w e to the i omega t, and it's matching v e to the i omega t. Now, what, what happens when I put i in for that second term, r? I just get an r. r times w times e to the i omega t. No problem. And now, finally, a 1 over c, the integral. The integral of the exponential brings down, uh, let me put it in the denominator neatly, brings down, uh, I divide by i omega. When I integrate e to the i omega t, I have a division by i omega. That's it. That's it. Those are the three terms that come times w, the unknown. This is to find. And of course, we find it right away. We find W is V over, and now we're seeing this I omega L plus R. Oh, let me combine the I omegas, the, uh, uh, combine the real part and the imaginary part. The real part is R, and the imaginary part is I omega L minus 1 over i omega c. Straightforward. And that has a name. That is the resistance. But when there's also a terms coming from an inductance and a capacitance, then the whole thing is called the impedance. So this whole thing, this whole 
denominator is called the complex impedance. Believe me, all these ideas are so important that they're all, all there's a whole vocabulary here. But you, you see, we've done exactly the same thing for other constant coefficient equations. We just called the coefficients a, b, c, or maybe m, b, k, and now we have a, a slightly different letters, but we don't have a new idea here. The, uh, the idea is this one over, that one over the impedance, that will be the transfer function, which multiplies the, the, the um, source to give the, to give the complex number w. And w is a complex number. I have to now th think about that. What's this? Uh, and that impedance is always called z. So that we now have a new letter for the important quantity that shows up in the denominator there. And again, its real part is the resistance. Its imaginary part comes from L and C. Oh, so we, we can easily see how large. What's the size of that impedance? What's, what's going to be the magnitude of this uh, current? We, we want the size of that number. V is the size of the voltage. Here is the size of the impedance. And the answer will give us the size of W. I say, I'm using size or magnitude to say that when I only do magnitudes, you won't be seeing the phase lag. So uh, complex numbers, like this complex number, has a magnitude, which we're about to write down. And also, it has a phase lag that tells, that tells us how much is in the imaginary part and how much is in the real part. But the magnitude is easy. What's the magnitude of a complex number? It's the real part squared and the imaginary part squared. Oh, that should have been a plus there, I think. I don't know how it became a minus. OK. Uh, it, it will become a minus, so I was thinking if I put the i up there, let me show you what I'm saying. The imaginary part is omega l minus 1 over omega c. What I'm saying is that if I put the i up there, then 1 over i is minus i. That's the brilliant uh, step I just took there. So all that squared. Are you OK with that? It's the imaginary, it's the real part squared, which is the resistance. And this combination gives the imaginary part. We square that. That's maybe called the reactance. And the sum of those squares is the impedance squared the magnitude. OK. So that's, uh, we have essentially successfully solved a uh, second order constant coefficient single equation for the current. OK. What to do now? Just let me add a little, little bit more. Maybe, a, maybe just a comment. That, that video was about one loop. When I told Dr. Moeller that one of the applications, one of the real applications in this series of videos would be an RLC circuit, his reply was, an RLC circuit is not an application not a realistic application, one loop. So what, how, how do we proceed with a full-scale circuit with many nodes, many resistors, many conductors, many, many edges? Well, we have a big decision to make, and that's the comment I want to make. They have a choice. They can use Kirchhoff's current law at the nodes and solve for the voltages at those nodes. Or they can do, as we did for one loop, use Kirchhoff's voltage law around that one loop, which said that the total voltage, that the currents in the loop gave a total voltage drop adding to zero. So that we, we solved a current equation for the unknown i. This is what we did for one loop. 
my message is just for a big system, this is the winner. So uh, uh, write, writing down the equations in terms of Kirchhoff's current law that the currents at ev we get the, the nodal picture, the picture with an equation for every node instead of the picture for an equation for every loop. Because it's not so easy to see which are the loops to consider or, and which loops are, uh, are combinations of other loops. So this becomes the linear algebra is the question. And the linear algebra, to get the loop picture independent and clear, is more difficult than the node picture. The node picture with the unknown uh, voltages, V, on the, at, at the nodes, uh, is the good one. And the matrix that comes into that is the incidence matrix. It, it connects uh, nodes and edges. It says how the network is put together. And that matrix I'll study with a little bit of linear algebra. So that comes in a later video. If you look for incidence matrices, you'll see probably two videos about those very, very important and beautiful matrices. Thank you.